Now, in the last video, we talked about the differences between unsaturated fats and saturated fats, and we kind of talked briefly about why uh, saturated fats have more of a negative health connotation and unsaturated fats have more of a positive health connotation. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about more of the uh, physical differences between saturated and unsaturated fats. And so you're probably familiar with um, the fact that things like butter, uh, um, animal fat, those things which are uh, often associated with saturated fats are usually solids at room temperature, whereas uh, things like vegetable oil, um, things that are associated with uh, unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature. And the reason for this also ties back into the fact of um, uh, the, the traits of being saturated and unsaturated. And so if we look here at stearic acid, which as you can see is a uh, saturated fat, there are no, uh, um, there's no pi bonds, there's no, uh, there's no rings, it's just a completely saturated hydrocarbon. Stearic acid is completely saturated, and sure enough, it has a uh, melting point of 69 degrees Celsius. Um, and if we go below, we have oleic acid. We, and here we have uh, one degree of saturation introduced. And so uh, we would count this as an unsaturated fat and its melting point is four degrees Celsius. So it's a lot lower. And if we go below that to linoleic acid, its melting point is negative five degrees Celsius. And see, you can um, see that we have another degree of unsaturation introduced. And if we introduce yet another degree of unsaturation with linolenic acid, we have the melting point go down to negative 11. And the reason why we're seeing this is, if you remember uh, uh, your London dispersion forces or your Van der Waals forces, basically the forces that uh, are very um, transient um, between you know, all uh, uh, atoms of all molecules, um, with larger atoms, you have larger van der Waals forces, and uh, with greater surface area contact, you have uh, larger van der Waals forces as well. And so if we look at steric acid, again, it's saturated, and we know saturated fats pack very well. Remember, if we use our example of paper, if we have a lot of these saturated uh, fatty acids, they pack very well, they share a lot more surface area, and so they share a lot more van der Waals forces as well. So greater van der Waals forces means that they have a greater uh, level of attraction between molecules, which would increase their melting point. If we take an unsaturated fat uh, going down to linolenic acid, um, we remember that trying to pack a lot of unsaturated fats together doesn't work so much because of all these kinks. Um, they just don't pack as well as if they were flat and straight. And so um, not being able to pack as well means that they don't have as much surface area contact and so there's less uh, van der Waals forces and so the melting point is lower and so the, that's that's basically why we see such a large spectrum in melting point and um, if we take typical room temperature to be uh, I don't know about 25 degrees Celsius which is around 77 degrees Fahrenheit, um, we can see that all of the unsaturated fats will have melted by the time we get to room temperature, only the unsaturated fat will still be a solid. And so that, that explains why things like butter and animal fat, the unsaturated fats remain solid at room temperature, and your vegetable oils, your unsaturated fats are liquid by the time we get to room temperature.